let's get started folks. Today, uh, lecture number 13, we are going to learn about multiplexers. Anybody who has worked on multiplexers before or heard of it? Okay. Uh, so multiplexers, they're pretty cool uh, devices and uh, we'll do an application today and a few examples. Um, so again, it's a magic device. It's a combinational circuit, uh, just like encoder and decoder. Uh, they fall under medium scale integration, MSI into the integrated chips cat classification. Uh, and we know for MSI, you can have up to 30 to 300 uh, gates per chip. Uh, it's also known as MOX. Uh, it is a combination circuit that selects binary information from one of many input lines and directs it to the output line. So the basic function of uh, multiplexer is basically you have some number of inputs going into the multiplexer it only turns one output at a time, okay? Uh, it has selector switches that we can change the values of those switches in order to select which input we want to go to the MUX. Uh, so uh, it's, it is simply a data selector and only one output always. Um, so if you look at the uh, block diagram here, if I can go here, this thing right here, This is how the block diagram of a MUX would look like. And if you look at it, the, uh, it's, the needle is actually pointing towards I0, which would be a selector switch. You can set the position of such that you can move the needle around, and it's only going to throw I0 at the output. If it's pointing towards I3, then it's only going to give you I3 at the output. Um, so this is how the MUX are usually going to work. The relationship between the input and output is such there's only going to be one uh, output. Uh, and you can have two to the power n inputs. So you can have one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Uh, and the selector switches uh, so this is a four by one mux right here. Uh, it's got four inputs, D naught, D1, D2, and D3. It's got enable, again, depending upon active high or active low, mostly it's active high. So enable if you set enable to one, that means it's on, it's working. Uh, for a four input MUX, you'll have two selector switches, uh, S1 and S0. So the relation is such that you have two to the power n equals to input. This small n is going to be a number of select lines. So say you have 16 inputs, how many selector switches you would need? You need four of them, correct? Right? Uh, what are the advantages of using a multiplexer? Again, you know, just like encoders and decoders, it's capable of reducing the size or shrinking the size of your uh, uh, device. It reduces circuit complexity as well. Uh, uh, it's uh, pretty cheap. Uh, and the implementation of various circuit using MUX. So just like we did one example where we, we did the full error and we took the decoder and implemented the, uh, the truth table for the full error with using the decoder. Similarly, you can actually implement uh, any truth table uh, for any combination logic diagram using uh, multiplexer all as well. And again, we'll do one example that we, that would demonstrate that. They, they come in different types and sizes. So two by one MUX, uh, four by one MUX, eight by one MUX, 16 by one MUX, 32 by one MUX, and these are the selector switches at the bottom in black that you see here. Um, so let's get rolling. We will move on to our uh, supporting material now. Okay, I also have this analogy to explain uh, what a multiplexer uh, is going to look like. So multiplexer is another high level uh, block, building block in digital circuits. And M times one multiplexer has M data inputs and one output and allows only one input to pass through to that output. They are sometimes also called selectors. They're also known as binary selectors. Uh, and they select one input to pass through the output. So if you really look at it, it's like a rail, rail yard switch. Okay, and you got four tracks basically, I0, I1, I2, and I3. Uh, and each of these track, they connect with track D. Uh, looks like right now I0 is connected to track D. Um, so there is a train on track number three. I hope it's not moving because it's not connected to D, so it might just trip over and fall off the track. So this guy at the bottom right, he might have to switch liver from zero to three in maybe next few microseconds 
So actually, if you look at the data sheet of MSP430, MSP430 is a microcontroller that you will use in uh, Embedded System 2049 when you take that course. It's solely based on that mic uh, microcontroller, MSP430. And you're looking at a block diagram of the MSP430. So if you look at that highlighted uh, box right there, uh, these are the clocks that go into uh, the, the microcontroller. So it's got four options, uh, modulation clock, auxiliary clock, um, submaster clock and master clock. So just like we have a heart that is responsible for, you know, uh, making the right flow of blood to each of the organs, it's uh, the clock does the same thing to our microcontroller. It's, a, it's the heart of the any microcontroller. So you can actually supply clock uh, using any of these four sources, and they have different frequencies. So say if you choose uh, auxiliary clock, it has a frequency of 32, 7, 6, 8 hertz. Master clock is somewhere around one megahertz, and submaster clock is around about that uh, range also. So uh, as, a, as a programmer, when you are working on microcontroller, you have, depending upon the application, you have this option to choose whether you, which frequency you want to go. So how do you select what frequency you want to go? If you notice here, you got this selector switch right here that says ADC10 SSLX. So if I have that selector switch, set to zero, zero, what would be the clock that's going into the system? Yes, guys. It would be that modulation clock from UCS, right? If I have these selector switches right here, these bits, these are select to master clock. If I, want to, if I want to set master clock going into the system, what these bits needs to be set to? One, zero, right? So actually, if I go to page 721, that's where that register is. This is that register right here. It's got two bits, bit three and four. If you set to one zero, you are feeding master clock to your system, which has a frequency of 1.048 megahertz, okay? So you can think of like how we can use multiplexer in our digital systems. Uh, simple, right? Make sense? Okay, all right. Let's move to our first example. Okay, the first example that we have is actually a two by one MUX. So <clears throat> we're gonna have two inputs right here. We're gonna say these are, this is I0, uh, this is I1. Um, this is our enable connected to VCC. Uh, and this is our going to be our selector switch, I'll say S. And this is our output uh, Y right here, okay? So when enable is zero, what would be the Y? Really doesn't matter what is the selector switch is set to, the output is going to be zero because the chip is off right now. When the enable is one and selector switch is set to zero, what would be the output here? Yes, guys. One? Okay, so Select the switch is set to zero, okay? I'm not give, defining any inputs right here, whether I0 is one or zero, or I1 is one or zero. You can just tell me the output in terms of the variable, okay? So if select the switch is set to zero, enable is high, what should be Y? Say it again. I0, that is right. I0, right? Okay, now if I0 is zero, it would say zero. If I0 is one, it would say one, right? So if say, if I ch change the value of the selector switch to one, what would be Y now? I1, correct? So it would be I1. So we'll go ahead and fill this to the table right here. And based on that, we'll do the, come up with the expression and then we'll do the implementation. So this is going to be uh, I0 right here. Enable is one, selector switch is one, uh, and the output is going to be I1, okay? Let's come up with a Boolean expression for this, uh, which would be what here? So we'll get the expression for this one. This is en dot s bar dot i naught plus this one right here. This one is going to be en dot s dot i one. Okay. This is the Boolean expression for the two by one multiplexer. Okay. 
So I actually went ahead and uh, inserted some of those end gates and all gates. Remember, we are implementing this equation right here. Okay. Um, say these are our data lines, I not, uh, I want. This is our enable, and this is our selector switch right here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to work on this expression first. Okay. I have an I naught going in there, so I'll, t I'll have all my inputs in blue. Okay, everybody following me, guys? Okay, all right. Uh, and then we have S bar. So I'll need an inverter here. And then I also have an enable. Okay. We know this is an end gate, uh, also an end gate, it's an R gate. Okay, uh, I'm gonna work on this term now. So I got enable. S, which is right here. I1, which is right here. Okay, and these two will become inputs of this OR gate right here, and this will be Y right here. Okay, so this is your two by one mux. Okay, this is what you have inside. Your two by one mux. Um, does everybody understand how I get this equation right here? Is there anyone who is a little confused about how did we get to this equation? Everybody? Good? This one right here? Okay, all right. So how did I get this equation? Okay, when we are looking at the truth table, what we are looking at? We are looking at number of ones, right? When we are taking min terms. So I don't really define here whether this is one or zero because I don't know what is I naught and I one. So I'm just going, just deriving my expression in terms of the variable, okay? We know this is zero, so I don't have to really put that in my equation, right? En is one, so I would write en, correct? S is zero, how do you write S zero in, when you're taking min terms? Bar, S bar, and then I naught, correct? Okay, plus moving on to the next term, which is one, 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 en, S, en, S, and I one. Okay, this is how I got this. Okay. Um, okay, moving on to the next part, which is actually a four by one mux. Okay, so see we have I naught here, I one, I two, I three. These are my data lines, the inputs. Uh, this is my enable again. Uh, these are my selector switches. Say this is S1 uh, and this is S0. Okay. Um, why do I have two selector switches here? Because that's how the relationship is between the switches and the inputs, right? If you have four inputs, you're going to have two of those, correct? Uh, remember, two to the power n is equals to uh, because we have four inputs, right? So this has to be two. And therefore, we have two selector switches. Okay, all right. All right. When S one S naught both are set to zero zero, means you get zero and zero here. What should be Y? Considering the chip is enabled, it's I naught, right? All right. Uh, and then this would be I one, this would be I two, and this would be I three, right? Uh, again, we can do the same thing and come up with the equation. So, this would be S1 bar, S1 bar, S0 bar, I0, 
plus S1 bar, S0, and I1, S1, S0 bar, and I2, plus S1, S0. Okay? So this is a Boolean expression for a full by one mux. Move on. Everybody following here? Okay. Uh, now what I did, I actually went ahead and uh, did the logism and implemented that equation and came up with this uh, plot diagram right here. Uh, now say, say you want to have some data in here. You have one zero zero one going into max and say you have s1 and s0 selected to one what would be the output y here okay All right so s1 is one s0 is one i0 is one i uh, i1 is zero i2 is zero and i3 is one okay what would be the output here What would be the output here, guys? Because this is 1, so this will be 0, correct? And because this is 1, so this will be 0. So any of the input 0 going into an AND gate, output is going to be 0. Uh, again, this is 0, so this will be 0 here. Um, what about this one right here? Again, any of the input is 0, output is going to be 0. Here you got 1. And then you got S0 and S1. They both are set to 1. So you have 1 here and 1 here. All the inputs are high. The output is going to be 1. And you got 0, 0, 0, 1 going into an OR gate, which means the output Y is going to be 1, right? So if I go here, notice that you have your selector switches set to 1, 1. Okay, and we would know 1, 1 will give you I3, and because I3, the line going into that mux is set to high, so we got high here, okay? So this is just a proof of concept, okay? Um, if I change S1 and S0 selector switches to 0, 1, then you would expect 0, 1 is I1, I1 is 0, so Y would be 0, okay? Uh, this is for the initial case, Y equals to 1, okay? Um, I don't want to do uh, the other uh, combinations. I think it's pretty clear. Uh, let's move on to the uh, very long description of 4 to 1 multiplexer. Okay, all right. So, let me start. Let's start with the module name. So, I say module. Uh, I'll say mux um, inputs s selector switches um, data lines i and then output y okay um, we got four data lines so I'll say three i not i1 i2 and i3 comma two selector switches so one colon zero s not and s1 okay uh, and then I got output y, okay, always at, what should I have in the parenthesis here? What are those variables or components which would have, if they change, have an impact upon the output? Yes, s, okay, anything else? Yes. I, our inputs are as well, right? So I'll say or I, okay. Alternatively, what we can do if we have more parameters that may have individually or collectively impact upon the output, we can use what? Remember guys? 
asterisk sign, correct? Okay. So um, there's another way of doing it. So case, what would this be? What are we specifically looking at? Selector switches, right? Okay. So selector switches is S. Um, I have data lines. Okay, select the switch is S. Okay, when the switches are set to zero, zero position, then what should happen? When two bits, select the switches have two bits, S0, S1, they both are set to zero, zero. So Y should be equals to I0, correct? So you just simply say Y equals to I0. Okay, when the selector switches are set to 0, 1, your y should be equals to i1. So you just say y equals to i1. Okay. And similarly, you say y equals to i2 here, uh, y equals to i3 here. Uh, you finish it off by saying n case and n module. Okay. Alternatively, you can do data flow modeling here also. Uh, coming up with expressions, which won't be too bad because it's a small circuit. Uh, you can also do structural modeling, which would mean you will have a lot of text because there are many wires in here. You got a lot of inverters, and then the outputs of each end get going into OR gates. So you'll have four more wires at least here. So it'll be too much. But using the behavioral model, uh, we see our code is a lot uh, descriptive, easy to understand, and a lot more smaller. It should be in square brackets. Thank you. Why should I be doing that, guys? That's a good point. Why should I be doing that? Yes, Mike. Because I'm actually decla declaring my I uh, as, a, as an array, correct? Uh, data lines dec declared as arrays. So that is correct. If I had actually compiled my uh, this code on Verilog, uh, on Vivado, it should have thrown me an error. Okay, our next example is cascaded two times one mux. Okay. Um, so again, this will be uh, an encoder, uh, an enable here. You got this enable here. If you remember the example that we did yesterday where we had 4x16 uh, decoder, but we actually made that 4x16 decoder using two 3x8 decoders. Similarly, we can make a 4x1 mux using 2x1 muxes. Okay? How? See that. Uh, you got I0 here, you got I1 here, you got I2, uh, I3 here. So you got four inputs here. Uh, this output of the mux will be feeded into this input right here, uh, and this output will be feeded into this, and this will be your y. Okay. Uh, now, how would you know that you need three muxes in order to make uh, a four by one mux? So, say you want to make a four by one mux, okay, using two by one mux. You take this number right here, okay, and you keep dividing by this because this is how, because you want to make your marks using two by one marks, okay. So this gives you two, and you keep dividing this number by two until you get to one, okay. All right, so I started with the four by one marks. I wanted to make it with two by one marks, so divide four by two, you get two. You take this right here, divide it again by two. And you get until you keep on doing that until you get to one. And you basically add these numbers right here, two plus one. So that tells you you actually need how many muxes? Three mux. So notice here you got your mux zero, one, uh, and two. So you got three muxes, correct? And also it tells you a sort of like a hierarchy. You will have two first, and in the next layer you'll have one. Okay? All right, make sense? 
um, say I have 0, 0 and 1, 1, okay, this will be our S0 and this will be our S1. Uh, S0 and S1 are both set to 1 and 1, okay. What would be the output here? What would be the output of this mark swipe here? Input lines, you got zero here and zero here. The selector switch is set to one. What should be the output here? Come on, guys. It will be I1, right? If S0 was zero, the output would be I0. But because this is one, the output is going to be I1. And because I1 is zero, so I'll just write zero here, correct? Okay. Again, S0, this is S0 here, which is set to one. What should be the output here? The input lines I2 and I3 are both set to high. It's going to be one again, correct? So you get one here, all right? Now this selector switch S1 is set to high also. Uh, you get data lines going in here. So this one is set to low and this one is set to high. What should be the output here? One, okay? This is how the muxers are gonna work. We will have to do one more example which would have a lot more muxers. So uh, that would be a good rehearsal for you. Okay, uh, moving on to the next example that we have. It's actually a three-bit majority circuit. Okay, so you basically look at number of ones. Okay. Okay, so this will be zero, uh, this will be zero, this will be zero. You got two ones here. If they're in majority, output goes by. Output goes high. Uh, zero here. You got two ones here. So one, one, and one. Okay. Uh, you can also consider these are your F naught and F one, F two, and then this is your F seven right here. Those will be feeded to these data lines of the MUX. So F naught, F one. And this is your F7. Okay, this is your enable right here. The output, uh, this output in the truth table will be fed into a mark. So those values are 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, triple 1. Okay, 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and so enable is this right here. Okay, uh, what are these at the bottom right here, guys? Select your switches. So S2, S1, S0, or in other words, I can also write down A, B, and C. So uh, A, B, and C, and this is going to be my F here, okay? So let's try one combination here. If I choose my A, B, C both high, Okay, um, what should be the output over here? Triple one makes a code of what? Seven, right? So F7, what is the value for F7? It's one, right? So if you look at the truth table, you also got one. So when I was saying earlier, you can actually implement any truth table using a MUX. This is how you do it. The data line going into the MUX will be the, will be the output function of the truth table. And whenever you have that, you feed it into a MUX, you should be able to uh, uh, create some logic or some application. So this is how encoders, decoders, and multiplexers are a lot more useful. Uh, imagine you have to, you know, previously what we were doing, we would put these values into KMAP, we then would get a simplified expression, and then we would make a circuit using the combination circuits. Whereas with the MUX and the encoders and decoders, we can avoid that and actually implement any truth table using uh, using them, okay? Uh, we're gonna do uh, the same example, but a slightly different way. Uh, we have, we wanna uh, apply eight by one marks using two by one marks, okay? Um, first thing that may come to your mind is like how many marks I would need, again, uh, we have eight muxes, and we want to replace them with two by one mux, so I have to divide by two. 
that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay. So we add these. And we get 4 plus 2, 6 plus 7. 7 boxes that we need. We need 4 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. We need 2 here. 1, 2. And then we need 1 over here. Okay. All right. Uh, remember, this is our F naught. Uh, S1 from the previous example, F2. F3. F4. F5, F6, F7. In this example, I didn't include the enable, but it's there. It's not that it's not there, okay? Um, you select the switches, S0, S1, and S2. The output of this mux is going to go here, and this mux will go here. This mux output goes here, and the output of this mux goes here. And the output of these two boxes go into these. And this is your F. Okay. So let's try one combination here. Um, what, what combination of the selected switches you want to go with? So give me give me some value. Come on. One one zero, is that okay? Uh, one one zero. It will actually be zero one one. Okay. Uh, so what would be the output here of this mux? A selector switch is set to one. What would be the output here? F one, correct? Come on, guys, you're a little low on energy today. Uh, here, S one is S naught is one again, so this would be F three. Uh, this is 1 and this is 1. So th the output here will be F5, correct? And this will be 5 F7. Okay. Again, this selector switch is set to 1. So the output will be what? F3, correct? Uh, and then F5, F7, this is 1. So the output will be F7. S2 is set to 0. So F would be? F3, and if you look at the previous example, F3 was what? 1, so F3 would be 1. So notice we, we had the selector which is set to 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, give us the output 1, and that's what we got over here also. That's what we got over here also. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Um, 35, okay. Let's move on to the next example right here. <clears throat> uh, same example, this time we want to do it uh, using uh, 4 by 1 mux, uh, and because we know we need an 8 by 1 mux here, so how many 4 by 1 muxes you would need here? How many? In this case, we are going to use 2 muxes, right? Uh, because uh, if you divide 8 by 4, you get 2 here, and then after 2, you cannot divide it further, correct? So we will need 2, but the thing is, we will just use an OR gate to merge the output of those two muxes, and it would work, uh, just like we did for the decoder. Uh, okay, all right, so again, this is our, uh, so remember, these were our data lines right here. So this is F0, F1, F2. F3, F4, F5, F6, and F7. This is our enable here. Okay. Um, have to make this connection. Wire the inverter. Okay. Um, so again, notice that the enable here is going to be zero for first four combinations and is going to be high for the 
rest of the four combinations. So when this is zero, for first four combinations, which of the module is not working? Which of it is inactive? So enable is zero here, right? So this would this is zero. So this would be what? One. So the top module will be active, correct? For the next four, when enable is one, this will be bottom will be active and top will be off. Correct? Okay. Let's verify one. Uh, so I'll just put the values of the data lines here. This is zero, this is zero, this is zero from the truth table. This is one. And then I got zero, triple one. Zero, triple one, right? Uh, let's try these combination. Okay, enable is zero. So look at the blue, enable is zero. S1 and S0 are zero. S1, S0, they are zero, 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 zero. Okay. Zero would mean this is just uh, inactive. So what would be the output here? Yes, guys. A zero, correct? Okay. Uh, one, that means this is inactive. S1 and S0 are set to zero. So what would be the output here? Come on, guys. Zero, right? F not, F not value is zero, so it will be zero. The output of this marks will go into an OR. So both are zero, going into an OR gate, zero, zero gets you zero. So we will get zero, and that's what we had over here also. Correct? Uh, if you do one more, zero, double one. Zero, double one. Again, enable is zero, so this one is working. This time, S1, S0 is one and one. So what would be the output here? One, right? And this will stay because this is inactive, so it will still zero. One zero going to an OR gate gets you one. So you get one here. Correct? Right? And that's what we had over here also. See?